We've all watched enough movies, or probably some of you have actually been there. It's called boot camp. And why do you think it is that all the soldiers are made to make their, taught to make their bed a certain way, shine their shoes a certain way, how to peel a potato, how to do all these things? Because what, what they are being taught is the yes response, how to follow an instruction, how to follow an order. So that when the big moment comes, they will follow that order. So really what you're looking for is a yielding in their heart and their mind to the request. And it's, this is how I use these various exercises. We're gonna do a shoulder in here in a minute. And it's an exercise where you take your horse from two tracks to three tracks, very simply. And it's done with, done, it's done 80% with your seat back and leg and 20% with your hand. A tiny little bit of flexion, probably accomplished with your, the fingers of one hand. This leg, if it's shoulder in is this way, this leg goes back about four inches, puts a little pressure, and boom, away you go. And you shouldn't see more than the bulge of that inside eye. If you see more than that, you've got too much bend in the neck. And what I'm really looking for is I don't, it's not really important to me whether it's done perfectly. What I'm looking for is am I getting a yielding to pressure Am I getting the willingness to try to give me a yes response? I'm looking for flexibility in heart and mind because when I go into the competition ring and I face them at a big high wide jump or whatever it is or a difficult task, I need to know that they are going to at least try. Whether they can do it or not, we're going to find out. But I'm going to know for a fact that they're going to give it a shot. So Alex is going to explain it a little bit more differently in, in sort of a more technical manner. I'd like to introduce Alex Grayton. He's a Millerbrook trainer and he will give you his explanation and then we're going to demonstrate the shoulder in for you. Alex? Thanks. So the an analogy that I've used often to teach uh, not just this exercise but a lot of different exercises, uh, I call it the three basket analogy. And uh, the, the, first, the first thing to do is to be able to clearly define what it is that we're doing. What's the exercise? What's the task at hand? So in this case, it's the shoulder in. So in this first basket, this is the shoulder in basket, we should be able to identify all the contents of it. What's involved? So Ian alluded to there's some inside bend. There's three tracks. There should also be where the rider sits in the saddle and how their inside shoulder comes back in order to correctly follow the horse. Uh, there's a level of activity in the horse's trot or walk or canter, whatever gait you're doing it in. So clearly defining the contents of what it is that we're doing. The second and probably the most important thing is the second basket, which uh, defines the contents of what the horse brings to the table. What is a horse volunteering? What does the horse do without being asked? So as you leave the corner setting up for the shoulder in, to be able to clearly identify what the horse is doing. Are they already in shoulder in? Are they actively against shoulder in? Are they leaning one way or the other? Are they bending too much or not enough or exactly right? The third basket, of course, is what the rider is going to bring to the table and it is based on the difference between those first two baskets. What do we need to have happen? What is the horse already doing? And then we supply the difference. So it, as we do this shoulder in, I like to think of it as there's not a set series of aids that we're going to do. We're going to be ready to use them based on what the horse is doing. So that's how I would tie this in with being able to have the riders feel because it requires the riders to first feel what the horse is doing, weigh that against the exact definition of the exercise and supply the rest. So if I may, to summarize, it's called reactive riding as opposed to proactive riding. We're going to ask for the exercise, there's going to be weaknesses in it, and we're going to watch how the rider goes about fixing those weaknesses. First they have to recognize what's not going well, and then we watch how they fix it. So please carry on. So he's going to do a shoulder in to the right, which means He's going this way onto three tracks, going this way. <clears throat> and it can be done at the walk, trot, or canter. Alex is going to do it at the sitting trot. So he's right on three tracks. Just about the right flexion in the neck. Rhythm stayed the same. Okay, that was a little too well done. <laughs> Okay, over to you two to not do it so well so we can really see what's going on. Next one. 
This is Taylor. She's six years. No, she's. <laughs> this is Taylor. She's a young talent, but she has lovely instincts. So you can watch how she does it. You can do it at the walk, the trot, or the canter. She's going to do it at the sitting trot, as did Alex. So the rhythm is breaking. Ah, oh, she's getting there. A little too much bend in the neck. Too much bend in the neck. There, you're on three tracks. Don't go past it. Okay, good. Her tendency is to go a little past it uh, and to have a little too much bend in the neck. Next one. So that's, in, in essence, an overachievement of the exercise. She didn't quite recognize when she had it right. This is Marcus. Little too much bend in the neck. Marcus is going to do it at the walk, which is just fine. He's on three tracks and he is studying the neck intently. Look up, Al, look up, look up. Good, very good. I don't want him looking down. Three tracks. Rhythm staying the same. He's a little bit, uh, can you see that, Taylor? He goes from three to four, and then back to three, and back to four. When Alex did it, he was dead on three tracks the whole way, but pretty darn good. So what you're really after is with Taylor and Marcus, that they feel that horse starting to go to four tracks, and they fix it before we even see it, in fact, before it even happens. That's what Alex did. How do you learn to do that? By doing it 10,000 times. Anybody can do it. <laughs>